Check out FlipSideGaming.com for all your gaming needs. Use the promo code HEROES to save 10% on all orders over $10. Hey there, this is John from Heroes and Legends, and welcome to the last Throne of Eldraine previews video. We're going to look at the last 17 cards that were revealed today by Wizards of the Coast. Quickly, before we get started, just a fast reminder, if you're looking to pick up Throne of Eldraine products, check out FlipSideGaming.com, and if you use that Heroes promo code, you can save a little cash and support the channel, which is always appreciated. But with that out of the way, let's get into it. We're going to begin by looking at cards that we discussed in previous videos, so if you're curious as to my thoughts on these cards, just check out the playlist. But this time we are seeing different variations on these cards. In some cases, that is the extended art variant, which we haven't seen before. In other cases, it's the regular version of the card because we saw the promo or the showcase copy. So those cards are Happily Ever After, Hushbringer, Merfolk's Secret Keeper, Rimrock Knight, and Kenrith's Transformation. One promo card that was just revealed, Piper of the Swarm. Now we've seen the card before and talked about it, but this is going to be your bundle promo in foil. And on to the new stuff, Flutter Fox. This is a fine limited card. Azorius Colors especially will appreciate this because they care about artifacts and enchantments the most. This kind of falls right in line with that. Now, this is just a bear with upside, though. 2-2 two, two for 2, it's a very good curve filler. You just need these 2 drops sometimes. It's a very important part of your sealed or draft deck. And occasionally, it could have flying. Not bad at all. Outflank. This is pretty good removal for white. It's instant speed. It only costs 1. It is conditional. I mean, it depends on how many creatures you control. Not going to feel good if you're behind and your opponent has some large creatures and you don't have a lot on the battlefield, sure. But many times this will still be pretty good for you. Can only use it on attacking or blocking creatures. So we've seen these type of things in white many times. Even though they do have some restrictions, they can still be good pickups for drafter seals. At the end of the day, this might be best in Boros. That color combination really cares about going as wide as possible in the set. But again, it's going to be good for you a lot of the time anyway. Prized Griffin. Not a lot to say about this one. It's a curve filler flyer. Sometimes you'll have better things at the 5 spot. But a 3-4 with evasion in the form of flying? Never a bad thing. Youthful Knight. This one is a reprint. It's got some new art here. And this set definitely makes sense because of the knight themes that you're going to find in the Mardu colors. First Strike could be great too with equipment or maybe even with an aura or some other way to pump it. Pay attention to this one. It's a common, but it's going to fit very well into a lot of different limited builds. Charmed Sleep, this is basically this set's claustrophobia. That's always a good card. This is always a good limited card. In this set, it does have the extra advantage that there's cards in blue and white, especially that care about artifacts and enchantments, so it could go towards that strategy too, while tapping down one of your opponent's important creatures. I like the name here. Didn't say please. Okay, so this is a cancel with upside, which in a vacuum can be fine and limited. Like sometimes you play them, sometimes you don't. It just depends on your strategy. However, this does more. Counter target spell, its controller puts the top three cards of their library into their graveyard. So you get to mill three. There are cards, especially in Demir colors, that care about the number of cards in graveyards. Sometimes they care about cards in your opponent's graveyard. Sometimes they care about stuff in your graveyard. In a pinch, I guess you could counter your own spell if you really, really needed to mill yourself desperately. But I think most of the time you'll be countering your opponent's spell, getting more cards into their graveyard, which could hopefully benefit you later. But remember, it is a double-edged sword because there might be reasons your opponent might want cards in their graveyard as well. Now, I know in Standard, especially if you play Magic Arena, you do run into these mill decks every once in a while. They have never really taken off, but now they have a new card to add to their arsenal. They could actually play these in conjunction with Thought Collapse? I don't know. I guess it doesn't make the deck worse. Queen of Ice. On the left, you see the regular copy. On the right, you see the showcase copy. This is actually pretty sweet. Do you want to build a snowman? Well, you can use Rage of Winter. A blue and one sorcery adventure. Tap target creature. It doesn't untap during its controller's next untap step. Great if you're trying to push extra damage across, or maybe you're just trying to slow down the game a little bit. Blue appreciates that sometimes. And then later on, you can just go ahead and let it go by playing the creature. So granted, the creature is not huge, but this is pretty good economy, especially on an adventure spell. A 2-3 three for 3 with an upside attached to it? I wasn't really expecting that in a common, honestly. Sure, sometimes it will die in the combat, but if it can keep that big creature tapped down an extra turn, give you one more look at a card, maybe it's enough to hit that removal spell. Also, remember, there are cards that care about adventures, so you could have that going for you here as well. Barrow Witches. Okay, this is fine for limited, as long as you have some knights in your deck. Like, you don't want to play this and not return a knight from the graveyard to your hand. 
three, four for five, not great economy on its own. But if you are recurring a card, then yes, this is pretty good. Ultimately, it might not always make your cut, especially if you don't have a lot of knights, but it has its role. Lash of Thorns. This is actually a pretty good limited combat trick because it's so cheap. Target creature gets plus two plus one and gains death touch until end of turn. So it's a pump spell if you're just trying to push a little extra damage across. Gives death touch so a smaller creature can take out something larger, considering this only costs one. Yeah, I'll play one or two of these and be pretty happy with it. Remember too, especially with knights, some of them have first strike. You also have trample creatures out there. There's a lot of value to be had with this card. Memory Theft. Okay, sometimes these cards see limited play, sometimes they don't. Now, again, much like the counter spell we saw earlier, if I'm trying to be a little slower, a little more methodical, this will be a fine card for me in a vacuum. If not, if I'm trying to be more aggressive, then maybe I skip this. But this card takes it a step further. Not only does it do the old black and two sorcery, target opponent reveals their hand, you choose an outland card from it, that player discards the card, but you may put a card that has an adventure that player owns from exile into the player's graveyard. So not only do you get the information from their hand, not only are they most likely going to discard a non-land card that you choose, but you can also catch a card that was off on an adventure. That added value is pretty good. And remember, we talked earlier about some of the cards in Demir do care about cards in your opponent's graveyard. Being able to put two cards in their graveyard off this, sometimes that will be helpful too. When it comes to standard, this typically isn't the type of card that would see play, obviously, when you have Thought Erasure out there. However, I do like the fact that they put in a hate card for one of the new mechanics that is kind of isolated within this set. Just in case there's some crazy adventure strategy out there that nobody saw coming, at least there's some kind of answer you could sideboard in. Here's a good card. Fling is back. It's a reprint, of course. Has new art. Always good and limited. Like, this is a dangerous card. When your opponent thinks they're safe and they go down to a certain level in damage, you can surprise them sometimes by throwing a creature at them, and GG, that's it. This can be very standard playable at times, too. It has seen play in that format in the past, and I think it could again. We did have Thud, which is going to rotate out now, but that was a sorcery that cost one, and this is an instant that costs two. Even for the extra mana, this type of effect is much better as an instant. Spore Cap Spider. This one's also a reprint with new art. Do you want to slow down the game? Well, I got a card for you. 1-5 with reach for just 3 mana. Your opponent's going to be staring at you for a little while if you play this on turn 3. There's not a lot that can get by this early in the game. Later in the game, sure, but wow, 5 toughness, it can block a lot of stuff. Now, if you don't main deck this for whatever reason, maybe you're not trying to gum up the game. If your opponent does have problematic flyers, then of course side it in later. Crashing Drawbridge. Okay, we're entering the artifact portion, so I'll just say it once so I don't repeat it with each card. But remember, there are cards that care about artifacts, especially within blue and to some degree also white. Now this card in particular, two casting costs, zero four, gums up the ground nicely. So it might be a good sideboard card and limited against aggressive decks if you're not main decking it. But it's also very good for an aggressive deck because it gives creatures you control haste by tapping this. Fantastic if I want to push damage across as fast as possible. Another reason, though, that I might sideboard it in if I'm not using it is Ginger Brute. If my opponent has a Ginger Brute, this gives me avenues to block it, which is kind of nice if they use the activated ability. I don't know if this actually sees standard play, because on one hand, I would say, sure, I would try it in an aggressive build, but I also don't want to be playing a 2 casting cost 0-4 with Defender if I'm on a very aggressive build. Most likely, Cavalcade of Calamity Rat is going to be the aggro deck of this next season. This doesn't really fit into that strategy all too well, but you never know sometimes until you try. Maybe it's worth testing. What I really like about this card, though, is I think this is great for Commander. It fits into any Commander deck. Put your Commander on the battlefield. You can immediately give it haste as well as any other creatures that are out there. Feels like a lot of Commander or Brawl decks would be interested in this. Prophet of the Peak. Okay, I'm usually not a big fan of these artifact creatures that they have really high costed since they can fit into any deck, so on and so forth. But this one actually is not bad. A 5-5 five, five for 6. Okay, nothing thrilling there. But when it enters the battlefield, you get to scry 2. Later in the game, you do want to smooth out those draws. You want to make sure you keep hitting gas and not lands, especially when you come down to the wire. This kind of helps you with that. Also gives you some board presence. No trample, no evasion, but okay. Now granted, you are hoping for something better than this when it comes to the higher portion of your curve, but if you don't have it, especially in seals, this could come in handy. Scalding Cauldron. Okay, this is fine. Like, it's a removal spell for creatures that, if you happen to get this in a draft later on and you realize, wow, you know what, I don't have enough removal, I'll go ahead and pick this up. 
That's really the purpose of these cards. They fit into any deck because of that. And yes, if you play it out for one, sure, it's telegraphing itself a little bit. But that might be okay, especially if you really care about artifacts. Like I was saying earlier, obviously there are cards that do in the set. This artifact only costs one to get out there on the battlefield. There's some economy just in that alone. Or you could keep it in your hand and then just use it when you have four mana. That way your opponent will be surprised by it. Signpost Scarecrow. Okay, Reaper King fans, here's another one for you. Not a real thrilling one, though. It's okay and limited. It does color fix, but it does color fix as a two for one. Eh, if you need it, you need it. It's fine. But you also get a 2-4 Vigilance creature for 4. Gums up the ground. Can attack in and then still be able to defend. I mean, that can be nice. And if you had enough mana and you were really desperate to fix color, this doesn't tap for that ability either. Once in a while, that might be applicable too. Weapon Rack. This is kind of sweet. It costs 4, which is a tad expensive. But when it enters the battlefield, it comes in with 3 plus 1 plus 1 counters. Tap it to move a plus 1 plus 1 counter onto target creature. Now, you can't do that as a combat trick, though. You can only do that anytime you could cast a sorcery. Yeah, nothing crazy, but definitely playable when knights. First strike creatures will appreciate this. And again, there are cards out there that just care about artifacts existing too. Guess what? We did it. That is every card from Throne of Eldraine. If you want to hear my thoughts on the rest of the cards, just check out the playlist. All the videos are together there. Tomorrow, we're going to come back with our market watch as we do every weekend. But until next time, hey, thanks for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe and have a great day. Hey, thanks for watching. This video is made possible through the generous support of viewers like you on Patreon. Check out the description below for links to our Patreon page as well as our Amazon affiliate store where a small percentage of all sales will also help support the channel. Finally, if you haven't had a chance yet to subscribe, hit that subscribe button so you don't miss any of the new videos on Heroes and Legends. Talk to you again soon and have a great day.